Moving down the digestive tract, we now have the throat. And we'll break down what the throat is in this video. We have something called the pharynx. Now, if you've watched my videos on the respiratory system, this first part might seem like a little bit of review. The pharynx is part of the throat. It is found immediately posterior to the mouth and nasal cavity. It's a common pathway. When I was still an undergrad, I used to work at a Texaco on the weekends while I was going to college. And I had a customer come in and he had a lot of piercings. And one piercing of interest was he had his nose pierced and his lip pierced. Now, that might not seem too odd, but what was odd here was that he had a chain connecting the nose ring to the lip ring. But the chain didn't go from here to here. No, 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 no. The chain went here, down his throat, out his mouth, to his lip. Now, the reason why I'm telling you this is because it's all connected. If you look at this graphic, you can see that there is a common connection between the nose and the mouth to the throat. This is the pharynx. The pharynx is divided into three subsections. We have the nasopharynx, which is by the nose, the oropharynx, which is by the mouth, and the laryngeopharynx, which is by the larynx. The muscles of the pharynx, we didn't talk about this in the respiratory system, but we need to take a look at it here in the digestive system. The pharynx has both a deep layer of longitudinal orientated skeletal muscles and a layer of circular skeletal muscles. The pharyngeal constrictors, this is the circular muscles, is going to help force the food down your throat during swallowing. And there are three subdivisions, the superior, middle, and inferior. The inferior pharyngeal constrictor, when you're not swallowing, it will close the opening from the esophagus to the outside world. So it forms a sphincter. Now this is not an anatomical sphincter. This is not like the muscles around your mouth or the, around your eyes or the muscles in your rectum. This is an anatomical, those are anatomical sphincters. This is a physiological sphincter. The difference here is that when you're dead, the sphincter disappears. A physiological sphincter isn't, isn't there anymore. So it's done by function, not so much by anatomy on this one. While it is the inferior pharyngeal constrictor, it is also considered the upper esophageal sphincter. Let me repeat that one more time. So while it is still the inferior pharyngeal constrictor, it is considered the upper esophageal sphincter. And like I said, it's not an actual an anatomical sphincter, it's a physiological one. Then we have the esophagus. The esophagus is a straight muscular tube around 25 to 35 centimeters long. It is found behind or posterior the trachea. What's kind of cool about this, if you ever get to do a dissection of a cadaver, what you're going to notice is that the windpipe, the trachea, has the cartilaginous rings and the esophagus is right behind it. And the esophagus, when there's nothing in it, will be flattened. When the esophagus has food and it has the bolus going down, it will push out, pushing in the trachea to allow the food to squeeze down. It's really kind of a cool anatomical physiological system there. The esophagus is going to pass through the diaphragm through something called the esophageal hiatus. It will open into the stomach via the cardiac orifice. Has a sphincter at the opening to the stomach known as the lower esophageal sphincter. Swallowing, also known as deglutition, has two phases. It has the voluntary phase, which you control, and then it has the involuntary phase, which is done on its own. The voluntary phase of swallowing is the buccal phase. It tongue collects the food, it's going to press it against the palate to form what we call a bolus, it's going to push the food posteriorly towards the back of the throat. The epiglottis, that spoon-shaped piece of cartilage that keeps you from choking to death every time you swallow, is going to tip posteriorly. It's going to block that windpipe opening. The bolus food is going to slide down the laryngeopharynx, as we just talked about a minute ago. Then the involuntary phase kicks in. This is called the pharyngeal esophageal phase. So we kind of get an idea of where this is as opposed to the buccal stage, the buccal stage in the mouth. The passageway superior is blocked, so the food can only go one way, and that's down. The pharyngeal constrictors are going to contract, they're going to squeeze, pushing the bolus the only way it can go, which is down. The action is known as peristalsis. If you've ever watched a snake eat, you've seen this. It's the rhythmical contraction of smooth muscle. 
Here's a quick little fun fact for you. Liquid is going to reach the stomach three to six seconds before solids do. In our next video, we're gonna take a look at the stomach.